Hey everybody, it's Raul Alejandro Mendoza here with Nerdcore. Of course, we are here going to be talking to uh, Wes and Laurel of The Young Fables ahead of the premiere of The Fable of a Song uh, making its premiere at the Nashville Film Festival on October the 2nd at the Rocket Town Theater in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, today I'm being joined by, of course, the the wonderful uh, duo of the Young Fables, and uh, I would like for you all to at least introduce yourselves to those who may not know who you are. Yeah, so my name is Laurel. And I'm Wes. And we are uh, are the Young Fables, and we're just a Americana duo based out of Nashville, Tennessee. We tour all over the U.S., and I guess now we have... we. Okay, so we just do music, but I guess now we have a documentary. So we're right. in, yeah. we're in the filmmaking world now, guys. We're really yeah. excited about it. We don't know what we're doing, but <laughs> you've entered the uh, the beautiful world of cinema now. You, you've exactly. entered the beautiful world of cinema. Now, um, now you're just gonna have to sit back and watch uh, a bunch of old uh, '60s flicks and stuff, you know, so you can go <laughs> ahead and get into the world of the of the wonderful medium of cinema. <laughs> if you could see our apartment right now. Like yeah. I'm a big film buff in general, oh, yeah. so we're like surrounded by movies. But I've never, we've never tried to be in one or make one. I mean, we live <laughs> we live in a loft where um, it's only one room. So in order to like make a bedroom, what is it called? Like a makeshift bedroom or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we took two, you know, bookcases that go pretty much up to the ceiling, and we were able to fill them all with Wes's books and movies. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Uh, you, you can't see my stuff, but, you know, I've got a good shelf over here. I've got some books. I've got some screenplays, and I've got a whole lot of movies. So, nice. Yeah, a lot of stuff. But, um, of course, um, I'm here to talk to you all about The Fable of a Song and really about y'all because um, I had the wonderful chance to watch this a little early before it made its premiere at, um, at Nashville Film Festival. Um, I don't know if everybody else had already checked out the film before they uh, interviewed y'all, but I did my homework last night. I stayed up to uh, 1 a.m. I watched the film. I wrote my notes. And uh, first of all, congratulations. Film is, the film is wonderful. Um, it's Thanks. a wonderful documentary. Um, you can tell there's a lot of hard work put into that. Um, not, not just uh, Andy Stroll's uh, direction, but y'all's uh, bravery to go ahead and open yourself up as artists to the people. You know, it's it's not something that's very easy that comes with um, when you're stepping into this new medium because you guys are mu mostly musicians, you know. This, this is the first time you've ever done a film, right? Yeah. yeah, and thanks for noticing that. I mean, it does, like, it's, I'm super proud of the documentary. Mm -hmm. I'm just super proud of the film, but it is it is hard to open up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Was there anything that ever kind of like, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, it was just like, it was just years and years of working on this thing is, it was uh, really intense. I can tell yeah. you that for sure. It's uh, working work on film. It's 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 a whole other beast because I've been working to put out a short film that I'm making, and it's almost going to be a year of working on this thing. And we're literally at the final steps, and that's a short. So I can only imagine what it's like to work on a feature. Right. It. Yeah. I can't. I mean, we were just in it, and like yeah part of it and that was a lot of work i can't imagine what andy and patrick right <laughs> right through. yeah uh of course uh so what because it was your first time ever making a film and being in the documentary uh was there anything that surprised you about this new medium that you guys found yourself in um anything that was like kind of new to you uh, of course it's pretty much going to be mostly new right because it's a yeah, film you've never done it but was there anything that kind of like surprised you well, everything was new to me. Um, everything was, you know, like I knew nothing. And this, it, it didn't really start out being like a full length feature film. Like it was, there's a bird outside my window <laughs> and it keeps hitting the window. And it's like very distracting because I don't think it knows that it's a window. It's very confused right now. He does it a lot, but today it's just like extra. I think he knows we're trying to do something important. Yeah. It's like anyway. the old Windex commercials, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Our windows will be very clean then. Oh, we just had them clean. That's it yes. then. Okay. Anyway, sorry, sidetrack. <laughs> um, this didn't start out being like a documentary or film or anything. It literally just started out being a very short, maybe five to 10 minute YouTube video of our version of the song process 
or, or the songwriting process, sorry. Um, so it just one, like life happened, I guess I should say in one thing after the other, yada, yada, yada. And years later, like we started this thing in 2017. It just, it just became what it is now. It didn't, we weren't like seeking out to like make a film, I guess. Right. It's just sort of happened over time. Just things kept falling, you know, and just, you know, it just kept happening. I think to me, what was so surprising was how slow everything is. Like when you're recording or writing a song or anything like that, it can be slow, but when you're working on like I was watching Andy and Patrick like work on something, they're taking like 30 seconds of footage and it takes them forever to like put it together. Like it is so slow. Yeah. I don't think I would have the patience to do that no. or, or the talent, but definitely not the patience. <laughs> yeah. You know, what one thing is like, Oh, the, the lights just aren't, you know, balancing correctly. We need to go ahead and, and, and take the meter on that one. And somehow you say, Oh, take five. And then you're like, well, no, it's more like 10 minutes that we're taking y'all and we still haven't gotten the next shot. <laughs> right. But, um, you know, that's just the wonderful medium that y'all found yourselves in with this film. Um, and of course, it was it was really nice to see not just y'all included. It was great to see your, uh, Laurel's mom, Laurel's father. You know, you had like a lot of other people kind of being involved in this Um at, was it at first like that? Did you guys expect for them to be the ones involved in it? Or did, were you like, oh, as time progressed, you're like, okay, what if I put my mom in it and like get some of her stories in there too? And let me get uh, the doctor to come in and do that too. Well, what really what happened was, I think we, I should just start from the beginning. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So like we were literally in this same exact spot that we're sitting in right now. And we had a song right back in 2017 with our friend Dean Fields. I'm sure you saw him in the film. Mm -hmm. And um, our manager, Patrick, came in that day and he was like, I'm going to, you know, just come in for your song right today, your session with Dean, and I'm just going to film you and we're going to give your followers and supporters um, a short YouTube video of your version of the songwriting process. And so, you know, we had like a really cool little YouTube video and we were going to release that on Father's Day of 2018. And... Um, you know, I have one sibling, her name's Lindy, and um, she is a huge daddy's girl, just like me, but she ended up passing away on January 5th of 2018. She died in a car accident, and, you know, not only did, did the, I don't know, the YouTube video or whatever, that, that changed. We didn't feel like it was the right time to release, you know, even on Father's Day during that during that time, just, it, it just didn't feel right to release it. My sister was gone. My parents were grieving. I was grieving. And so, um, yeah, we just decided to wait. And then the song changed. So the song completely changed for me because I'm a daddy's girl, but she's a daddy's girl too. So I don't know. It was just, it was totally life-changing for me. And, uh, Patrick asked if he could keep filming because he was really close with my parents. And especially after my sister passed away, he really like built this really like strong connection with them and he would stay the night at their house and drive back to East Tennessee where we're from uh so you know he was like I'm gonna keep filming if that's okay with you and I'm I was totally fine with it and my parents were fine with it and he'd stick a camera in front of their face and they would open up about the loss of their daughter and just all these terrible things that they've had to go through and we have all this footage that like really, I don't really know anybody who has this kind of stuff, you know, and Patrick's like, maybe this is something more. And so maybe we'll release it later on in 2018. But then after my sister passed away, my dad passed away eight months later, I was literally in the same spot. I'm sitting in the same spot. I wrote daddy's girl. My mom called me and she was like, your dad died this morning of a massive heart attack. And then, you know, once again, my life changed, you know, the song changed again. And now we have this feature film um, of not only just the songwriting process, but just how songs can change over time. You can write a song and it means something to you. And then, you know, even a few months later, it means something totally different and songs can keep changing. And this film's about grief and depression and loss and just kind of getting through the tough stuff, you know, so, yeah. stuff that we all go through. And uh, you're talking about Daddy's Girl, um, which is pretty much the song that you're detailing the process of in this film. Um, yeah. I wanted to know, um, 
you know, how, how important was it to you to write this song and then specifically how it shaped more um, going forward in your life and having these two big losses happen? How important was it for you to write to, to write and perform this song now uh, in order to move on, in order to cope with the loss of your father? That's so crazy because no one's ever asked me that yeah, question. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, that is a great <laughs> question. No one has ever asked that. And well, it's important because oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but, you know, there's something that people don't really understand about artists in general. You know, sometimes our art is a reflection of of, of what we go through, you know, uh, whether, you know, whether it be the music that you all make, whether it's the scripts I have written, you know, mm -hmm. art is a reflection of just of the human condition. But it's also a reflection of us, a reflection of what we go through every single day. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I wrote that song, you know, I, I had an uncomfortably close relationship with my dad. I mean, we were like best friends, you know, it wasn't just like a typical father daughter relationship. And I know probably most daughters would say that about their dad, but ours was super special. It really was. And when I wrote that song with Wes and Dean, it was like, it took two songwriting sessions because it was so hard for me to write a song about my dad because I felt like there were these big expectations of our relationship that I just needed that song to live up to that. So I think that's why it was so difficult to write. Like I said, it took two sessions and everything in that song is like true, like down to the, it, you know, if you've heard it, it's like down to the street that, you know, I grew up on the only house I've ever known and every tiny detail in that song is true. And so now, you know, and when, and even when I sang it then, like I thought of my sister, she kind of had the same, same relationship with, with my dad, with her dad, you know, with our dad. And now singing it, it's, it is, I don't know. It's hard to sing it and it's hard to like tell that story it shows and kind of like share my story. It is hard, but it's more rewarding than it is difficult, but it still takes a toll on you. Like we just got, you know, we just got done doing our, our Michigan, Ohio leg of our 2021 tour. And, you know, every time I get done doing like a stretch of shows, I cry because it's so, or like I have some type of, I guess, meltdown because it's like reliving everything is so therapeutic to me, but also with, if anybody goes to therapy, you know, that that drains you. And I just am drained after every single not every show but if I'm doing the same thing every night for like multiple nights that's hard but I feel like that has really helped me get through more than anything is being able to like connect with other people that go through similar stuff that I've gone through that Wes goes through you know I don't know if that answers your question oh, it does uh, it has to be a very cathartic feeling um, yeah what I really like about uh, the doc is especially how we're we're you would say um, we we in the in the industry it's kind of like you're taking the camera into the field, you know. In here, you know, you're inside the belly of the beast. When you're when you're what's it called writing the song, you have Dean in the room, you have Wes in the room. I wanted to ask Wes how important was it for you to be in there with her to help write this song because you know I'm sure that y'all have written a lot of other songs together, but like specifically this one, how important was for you to lend that helping hand? I think that that's what blows my mind about this whole thing, this whole process, that song, the film, is that we've written a ton of songs and we write a lot of songs together. And this happened to be the one song that we filmed, you know, like out of, we've written terrible songs no one should ever hear and tons of them. But the one time we set up a camera to film it's this song and then all the things that happened after the fact and because to like when we started out that day there wasn't an idea for a song there was nothing so it really was just another song writing day you know and we do that all the time so it's like it was just as important as any other day to write the song, but this is the song that came out of it. That's what blows my mind about it. Me too. It's like, that's why I say there's no coincidences. I really believe that because that's the song we wrote. These are all the things that's happened and we have it all in film and I'm connected with, you know, we're connected with such powerful, like, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just everything just fell into place. It's not like we were looking to make a film. I wasn't looking to make a film, especially over that. You know, I was grieving. I mean, I still grieve. So I was not looking to make a film. It's just like, 
I feel like this is how it's supposed to be. As sad as it is, you know, especially for me and my mother, I feel like this is how it's supposed to be. And I feel like I'm not really sure about a lot of things in my life, like personally, but I, every time I step on stage, every time I tell my story, every time, you know, someone watches that film, I'm like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It feels right. I, and, and that's great what you're saying here. Um, and I want, I, I like, there was something I really liked because it's something that to me, it's so hard for me to do when I'm, uh, when I'm writing myself, um, because, uh, I've recently, it's been really hard for me to crack a script right now. Um, I finished working on this one I'm making right now, and I have not yet cracked this script. I wrote a page this week of, from a new script that I wanted to make, and yet I still don't even know if I'm going down the right path. But I liked something that you showed to the camera, Laurel. You said, I've got this notebook here, and I'm writing, but every time I close this notebook, I believe it said, uh, you're doing a great job or something, you did great or something like that. Um, At least. <laughs> yeah, I did my best. Um, I like that a lot. Is there anything else you kind of do during the process that you, um, the what's it called, uh, that, that it serves as a, like a uh, pick me up whenever you're like, oh well maybe I'm not getting the right tone I want here. I'm not writing the the, the lyric I want here. I think maybe we can both answer answer this. Yeah, Lauren yeah. Wes. I. I don't know, for me, it's like when I first started, especially writing with other people and collaborating on songs with other people, you know, there's, there's still is a very high expectation. Like you're, that's someone else's time. You don't want to waste someone else's time. You want to come in and you want to write a good song and you want them to write with you again and vice versa. But, you know, I think over time you kind of learn that like, you know, it's okay to like want to do your best, but you're not going to get a great song every time you write. And I think that that's a really important mindset for just at least me to be in. And, you know, even if you don't write a great song, it's like, I don't know. Sometimes I have to step back from just like being so like, oh, well, this is how the song is laid out. You need a verse, you need a chorus, you need a verse, you need a chorus, you need a bridge, you need a chorus, you need a, you know what I mean? All these things. Sometimes it's just like with Daddy's Girl, like there was a time where it was so difficult to move on to that second verse. Dean was just like, tell me a story. Tell me a story of you and your dad. And then I told the story about us you know our thing was like late night trips to walmart of course i didn't make it in the song but it sparked something else and it sparked a conversation and that led to something that's so much more beautiful than just getting you know the structure of a song and just writing down whatever like is good on paper it's like that song is special because we took the time to like really dig deeper into the story it was harder but it was so worth it so that's the kind of stuff i think about yeah, I, I agree with that, where it's like, it's so easy. I think this is with any art form. It's so easy to water it down to try and appeal to as many people as possible that you lose what is like special about it. I think you said that in the documentary. Too. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think I did. But it, that to me, that's really important to remember. It's like, you you got to you got to put some specifics you got to just try but also when you're talking like you were talking about writing scripts and stuff and sometimes it's hard to get get into it get started and, and to me that's a big deal like i have to force myself a lot of times and sometimes it's like even if this song is going nowhere and it sounds like crap i just got to do it just got to sit down and and write it and get it out just to just to move on and i'm that way know? too but i'm a little bit the opposite i give myself a little bit more like grace like because mm -hmm. mine i think our songwriting come not really it doesn't come from different places mine's like if i'm feeling something that's when the song comes but I, you know and i used to like me and what like i used to make myself sad so i could write a good song <laughs> and so now i've like tried not to do that because it's like just give yourself time like think your life goes on things change tragedies are gonna come that's what i've learned so don't make yourself sad like that's that's you'll what have I, enough of that you'll have enough sadness <laughs> so i don't know i i have to give myself time and grace like even breaks from writing music because i think what you were saying earlier about you know writing your scripts and stuff i think that's writer's block you yeah. know because it's like we all get writer's block so sometimes my best song ideas come from when I'm walking like by myself or running or doing something outdoors where I'm just alone. And then I just get out my phone and I write on my notepad. And that's where the majority of my thoughts that are worth anything come from. I think. 
I think I'm the same where it's like most of the time it just starts going like when I'm driving or mm-hmm. whatever like that, you know, just sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you never know what kind of pops into the head, right? You know, it's in the, it's, it's in the heat of the moment, you know, once again, yeah. something else can pop in. It was really interesting how you were talking about like, you know, with daddy's girl, you're like, Oh, there was a moments where I was like, I don't know if I can, what's it called? Like right now, like this is a little too close. It's a little too fresh. You know, um, I find that really interesting because usually people would say like, Oh, you know, if, if it's happening right now, like, you know, and you're feeling really inspired, aren't you able, you know, I don't think people really understand where, like, you know, when the trauma is so connected to the art, sometimes it feels a little too real. And in, in there is where it starts, like, open back up. It starts, to feel, it starts to feel very draining. Like, it's kind of like therapy, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. that's why I commend y'all's, you know, honesty and uh, brave. Because uh, what people don't really understand is, like, because I, when it comes to music, I, I love that honesty. You know, I, I've got that... Um, I've, got, I've already wrote my review for this uh, this film. I'm going to be dropping it tomorrow for for uh, for everybody to read. And I and I talk a little bit about um, one of my favorite albums of all time is uh, Notorious B.I.G.'s Ready to Die. Ready to Die is really really honest. I mean, y'all y'all would not think that Biggie would go into that studio to talk about his suicidal thoughts. No, that's not something you would think he'd be going in there to talk about. But he lays it all out, and it's the same way that y'all go ahead and lay it all out there for um, not just Daddy's Girl, but um, uh, your kind of company. And um, I wanted to know where where was there ever a moment when you were writing your kind of company, when y'all were writing your kind of company, where you're like, okay, maybe maybe this is again like I can't keep writing today. Like this is coming a little bit, you know, a yes. little little too close to home right now with the um, like, subject yeah. matter. When I have those moments, I feel like that's when I know I've got something. And I think Dean taught me that because um, when I started crying, like, I don't know, I'm pretty sure that's on, that's in the documentary, but he was like, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's when good shit starts to come. I mean, it is like, uh, yeah. And, and also something I want to say about you know, you were talking about like suicidal thoughts and like really being real and stuff. This documentary catches a lot of real moments, a lot of them, but I mean, Patrick and Andy and all the people involved with this process made me look like I handled everything with so much grace, but I did not, I do not like, and, and I wanted, that was the only thing in that movie. I'm like, I wish that there was more, if there were more like real moments, people probably think I'm crazy, but grief does weird things to you. Loss does weird things to you, stress, depression. It's like, I definitely had suicidal thoughts and I don't want anyone to think that I just floated through this thing and just like came out stronger in the end. Like I am forever changed. I suffer probably 60% of the time and my life and mindset is totally different. So that's something that, you know, I haven't said a lot, but I definitely want to say that because they made me look like a movie star, a rock star. Like I just walked right through this thing and I was just like thumbs up at the end. You know, the only good thing that came out of this is like, I found, I found out who I really am more than I ever have in my life. I still don't know who I am, but I know Laurel, more than I ever did because of everything that happened. So I just wanted to put that out there. I know that's random, but I haven't gotten to say that yet. So, <laughs> well, I think I think they do show, you know, the realness that it is and everything. And and it's funny you were talking about uh, company that song because not even I remember when we were recording that song specifically, we had to do the vocals in two days because it was just so hard to get through mm-hmm. in one day. Like, and that's, you know, a three and a half minute song. You know, it shouldn't take two days <laughs> to do it, but it's just, there was too much there, Yeah, you know, to do. Well, I would imagine, you know, it's a, it's a very heavy topic. It's uh, it's substance abuse. It's, it's, it's a uh, drug addiction. It's, it's really important to uh, take that time to really like uh, understand and really like talk about that without feeling like you're uh, straying too far from the path, you know? Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but um, you, you also had that little bit of, uh, you talked about that with Daddy's Girl too, and you were in the studio recording, you're like, okay, I think you said like, oh, I'm going to, let's just come back tomorrow. Let's go ahead and finish because it's, it, 
you know, it's a little too hard right now. It, and uh, that's that. That's what people just don't seem to understand how important that is. It's like, you know, you can't really show everything in this film. You know, if you if if you could, this would be a six hour film. Let's be honest yeah. here. Yeah. Or long. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It'd be yeah. A three years. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's six hour. Hell, I mean, it was, it was, it'd be it'd be as long as that Zack Snyder's Justice League that came out. Man. I'm telling <laughs> you. Yeah. Uh, but it was. Um, it, it was really, it was really beautiful to see that honesty, though, because not a lot of people want to be honest. You know, it's 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 easy. Uh, one thing that I kind of reference in the review, it's like, what this documentary does so well is that it lets you get to know the people behind the instrument. You know, because you can be up there and you and you can um, and you can you can watch the Young Fables, but there's something truly special when you get to know Laurel Wright. And Wes, um, and I'm so sorry. What's your last name again? Lunsford. Lunsford. Okay. There's something special when right. you get to know Wes Lunsford, you know, because you know where they're 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 sometimes two very different people, and yeah. uh, I wanted you. I wanted to know specifically um, how how did it feel for that to have to like kind of bring that honesty now, you know, because that's stuff that you can portray when the camera's off. But did it change a little when you were when the cameras were on, or was it the same way? I don't know. I feel like for me, I am, I was, I think we were talking about this maybe yesterday, whenever we were having breakfast with. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like I am, I may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I feel <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like I am me always. I don't care if there's a camera in front of me. I mean, obviously you have to be like more professional at times, but I feel like for the most part, you get what you get. Like, that's just how I've always been. And my mom's always like, Laurel, don't say that, you know? But yeah. I'm like, I feel like I've always been able to like be real on stage, tell my story, be vulnerable. I think that's one of my strengths. But so yeah, for me, it wasn't super different. I don't know. I feel like I am what I am. You get what you get. And I feel like you get the same way, you know? I think that's what why the film works is that our live shows are similar. I mean, it's like, we're gonna say what's on our mind at the time. We're like not trying to put on airs or be anybody. We're not, you know, we're trying to be just- I mean, we're we not are. actors. Right, exactly. No. As, so. as you could probably tell. <laughs> Come on, go, go ahead and give yourself a little more credit. You know, uh, it's documentary, oh, it's, it's, it's yeah. 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 You know what? Not everybody needs to be uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, you know? Not everybody That's needs true. to be the greatest of the rest, but it's but also a documentary. Guess, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a documentary. You're, 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 uh, you're capturing life inside of the moment, you know? You don't have to give an A-plus performance like Meryl <laughs> Streep or something, you know? It's not right. like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're doing great. Thank yeah. you so much for watching our film and, like, I don't know, chatting with us. Like it really yeah, means a lot yeah. that you you watched it and paid so much attention to it. Like it really truly like touches my heart. I know that sounds yeah. stupid to say, but <laughs> it, it does. Well, how cool is it, man? You know, you're gonna get this uh premiered at National Film Festival on October the second. Um, how important was that, you know, to have it premiere at your um your this is your home state, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, how important was that to it to be like, hey, this film is finally going to get premiered and it's going to get premiered at my home state. I, I think that just comes from our being naive. It's like, I didn't even know it was possible really. <laughs> I you didn't, know? I didn't like, either. Like, I thought just, we were just going to show it to our family. And right, it was like, <laughs> yeah. so this is like really mind blowing. Like they're, you know, doing a red carpet premiere and all this kind of stuff. It's just like, yeah. And, and like, yes mind-blowing important but i think like for me it's the fact that like you know people have watched it like close friends and family and then like even the people that have you know like you've watched it you don't know us and like you know andy he let his neighbor watch it that didn't know us and it touched him i'm like the fact that somebody else that that are complete strangers to us mm -hmm. like they got something out of it it's like that is that's what life's all about. It really is like being able to just connect with other people on very deep, intimate levels that people that you don't even know. That's, that's amazing to me. 
Yeah, I think that's a testament to Andy and Patrick. They yes. Just, like, because we originally, like Laura was saying, this was content for our music, our band. And, right. you know, it's like, but to take it, to be able to um, touch people who don't know our music or may not even like our music or anything like that, you know? <laughs> so I think that's, you know, a testament to their ability. Yeah, so true. Yeah. There was something that really uh, stood out to me. Um, it was something that I connected on a personal level. Um, uh, Laurel, uh, in the documentary, you talk about how, um, I believe it was right after you lost your sister. Uh, you said, I took one week to like do what I needed to do. And I came back, back to work. Uh, I connected a lot with me because uh, I was like two years ago, I lost uh, the woman who raised me. I, I, lost, my, I lost my grandmother. It was the same thing, um, you know, everybody, what's it called, my, 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 uh, my co-hosts were like, hey man, you know, we got to put on podcasts, we can put podcasts off, you know, and I said, no, give me a week, I'll be back in, and uh, what people don't really understand, it's like, you know, I can take all the time I want, but like, the body doesn't forget, the body, you know, you're constantly grieving, you know, the body <laughs> never, ever forgets, you know, uh, the, you know, it's, it's something where like, you know, just just looking at the uh, the tree of my grandmother where, where she's outside with her ashes spread, you know, just seeing that just creates this like, you know, reaction on the bo in the body. Um, yeah. So I wanted to know, like, you know, what's it called? Um, I, was it that decision for you to take that one week or were you like, you know, it's like, or were you in the same field as me? Where, where you're saying like, you know, the body's not going to stop grieving, you know, so I'll just give myself some time. But like. This is going to something that's going to take more time. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and I'm really sorry about your grandmother. Like, oh, I am. And, and, and the thing is, people don't know what it's like. Like, I didn't know. Like, whenever I had friends that their family members or people that were close to them that died before I lost anybody, it's like, in my brain, I knew exactly what to say. I knew how to treat them. I knew, you don't know until you've gone through it yourself. And now it's like, I don't even know what to say to people. Like, I just say, I love you and I'm here. That's all you can say to somebody. But I don't know, I, I don't, I can't remember how long it was like a week or however. I know it was a short time though. And I knew, I feel like, you know, I'm a hustler. Like I hustle, I like to, you know, keep moving forward and like growing. And you can't do that if you're sitting around crying all the time, you know? So I was like, okay, I'll just take however long and then I'll get back at it. Cause the thing is with us, and this was, this all comes from pressure that I put on myself, not from anybody else, just before I say anything. So um, I put a lot of pressure on myself to get back to work because I was like, if I don't work, Wes doesn't work. We're full-time duo together. You know, we, but we each have our own other little things that we do, but for the most part, that's what, that's how we make our income. And then we had a manager we still have a manager, you know, I was just thinking about everyone else. And, you know, I'll be honest with you. It wasn't until a few weeks ago that I think that that really affected me, that mindset. It's like, I would spend so much time, I spent years thinking about, oh, what I, what I'm doing and what I don't do affects other people, but also that affects me. And it, I felt like I wasn't doing, I thought I was doing everything right, which how do you know what's right and wrong with grieving. I think there is no right or wrong, but I feel like I was doing it wrong. And so, I don't know. I just feel like I have to be a little bit more selfish lately because then it ends up me being in just full, like, I, I don't even know. Like, maybe you should help me out a little bit. I don't know. Like. I think it's different for everybody. Like, like you were saying, like it, there's no right or wrong answer. There's not enough time. Yeah. There will never be enough time to get over it. You can't get over it. And it's, everyone you handles sort of have it to like differently. Stop and start your life at these points. You know, it's like this. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a touchy, weird subject to talk about because you don't want to put your opinion out there and and shove it on to other people. Because whatever works for me ain't going to work for somebody else. Yeah. I just felt like I was trying to just do what was good for everybody else because I put pressure on myself but I wasn't doing what was best for me in the moment. And that caught up to me. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I went ahead and also listened to your music. Um, you know, like I said, when I said I did my homework, I did my homework. 
Um, I'm proud of you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I, I can't imagine if there isn't an interviewer who doesn't do their homework. Come on. Like, <laughs> you know, I had never heard of y'all. Um, I was right. surprised that my brother has followed y'all, though. But um, my brother oh, lived. Really? I don't know if y'all ever did shows in New Orleans, but my brother lived in New Orleans for a long time. So he probably yep. saw y'all out there at one point in his life. I've never been to New Orleans. But we have played close in Texas. Oh, oh, that's true. I don't know where, where it happened. but that's you know, so you cool, it. though. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, and I, I checked out your music. And there's this, there's this like sort of very beautiful, melancholic vibe to this music. Um, it's kind of this very creeping sound that kind of just like digs its way into the heart. But, you know, while it's grabbing it, it's also caressing it. You know, um, I wanted to know how much time did it take for you to kind of perfect this sound? Because I would think that the sound has changed a lot from where you started to where you're at now. And y'all can both uh, answer yeah. this question. You describe everything so beautifully, by the way. That's <laughs> Th like, thank you. <laughs> that's such a gift. I mean, truly, it is. Yeah. Thank you. That, that really means a lot. Um, <laughs> y'all are my first... Um, well, y'all are my first interview. You know, we've, I've had the pleasure to talk with a lot of other people, but you're the first interview from this whole festival that's happening. So. Right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're you're amazing. Okay. I think I, I think that's a good way of describing it, and I'm I think it has changed a lot because so we just are in the process like we just released our third record, and so Daddy's Girl and Company and all those come from our second record and. Between the three, I feel like there's vast differences um, musically and just feeling wise. But that idea, I think that's sort of what we talk about when we write songs is that we don't want it. We don't want to make up stories. We don't want to talk about things like and it's not necessarily like everything has a sad or a bad ending or anything. But there's so many gray areas, I feel like, in life. And, and yeah. we talk about those where it's not necessarily like, oh, this is so sad or whatever. It's like, no, it's the gray parts in between. It's not, you know. Yeah, it's know. not happy or sad. It's just kind of like it is what it is. It's stuff that we we all go through. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have one last question here about, you know, the music. And I'm going to go ahead and get into this uh well, not a game, but it's like some of these speed questions to to ask y'all. Uh -oh. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not good at these. Well, I've been no, here, at, here at the Nerdcore, uh, we're mostly about movies. You know, we're mostly about movies, uh, video games, and whatnot. We're we're about embracing nerd culture and making nerd culture <laughs> normalized. So, you know, don't be surprised if I start asking about like what your favorite movies are. But I wanted to know. That there's this there's something that gets brought up in this movie by Dean that um, that I think is really interesting. Here and Dean specifically talks about the universality of art. I wanted to know: is there ever a song that when y'all when, when, when it popped into your head that you wanted to write this song and you were like, I don't care if everybody else goes this or not. I need to write about this because it's just been itching at my skin that I need to write about this. There's something that I need to write about. And uh, care to explain? Yes. You should well, talk about the three on pages. I mean, that's Oh, it. yeah. I mean, first of all, that happens to us all the time because that's, I mean, I feel like writing for me is very therapeutic. I have mm -hmm. to do it. I feel better after, no matter how hard it is. Yeah, it's, it's therapy. But the three songs on pages, the record that we just put out, mm -hmm. You know, when you're picking songs for a record and you do it like, you know, with a professional like producer and engineer and you're actually in like a Nashville studio, it's not just you picking the songs. You've got, you know, we had, I had a list of my favorite songs. Wes had a list of his favorite songs. Patrick did, our manager, the producer did. And we had, okay, between our second record and the one we just put out, we had had written 60 songs. Right. Holy and there were yeah so we had all those to choose from so there were a lot of like different like everyone had a completely different list and there were three songs on my list that were non-negotiable it was a song that i wrote about my sister um she was mine a song that i wrote about my dad been here the whole time and then a song that i i say i but i mean i with other people right. me and wes are the same person yeah. uh, and then the third <laughs> one was um buried me too which is a song that kind of summed up 
you know, the way that I felt and what I went through when I lost both of them. And those were three songs that were like, and again, we only had 10 songs on this record. We ended up having 11 because we couldn't decide. So, yeah. But those were three songs that weren't really favorites on anybody else's list because those were songs that I connected with. But I said, these have to be on the record. Mm -hmm. They have to. I don't want to have a sad record, but these three sad songs, they have to be on there, non-negotiable. And those were songs that I wrote just because I needed to. But I, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, mean, and I feel okay. like that, that was good, you know? And by the time we finished those songs, the producer was like, yeah, these are some of my favorites on the record. Yeah, no, yeah. you're you're right. And I feel like a lot of people don't like to talk about suicide and they don't like to talk about suicidal thoughts or just, just even being depressed or having anxiety and all the things that you that go that come and go along with anxiety and depression. Like that's that's hard stuff to deal with and it makes you do crazy things, like I said earlier. So yeah, I am right there with you. It makes when I hear other people talk about it or other people sing about it, and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like they would say that. It makes me feel not as crazy, you know? So yeah. I'm right there with you. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get to know y'all. Yeah, I want to play with these with some of these questions. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw out a couple of questions here. Uh, favorite album of all time. Oh, man. You go first. I don't know. I'm just going to say the thing that comes to, to, to the, the, my first thought is probably the Jason Isbell record, the one on something more than free. Oh yeah. That's mm -hmm. a great one. Every song is so good. All I'm right. Gonna go, I'm going to go with Bill Frizzell gone just like a train. All right. Uh, favorite album so far this, this year. Ooh, um, I'm so stuck in the past. I don't even God, know. me too. Uh, I'm not going to lie. That Casey record's growing on me, man. When I first listened to it, I was like, nah, I don't know, but I love it. I love it. Sorry. I think that Marcus, Marcus King that come out this year, his new record. Let's just say it. say it. Did. Let's say it did. All right. Um, and of course, because we're all about movies here, uh, I have to know what are y'all's favorite movies of all time? Peter Pan. Oh my <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. You know it is. Yeah, but my okay. So I'm like a huge horror movie guy. Oh yeah, you guys are getting along. And uh, my favorite movie since I've been a little kid has been Army of Darkness. All right, hey, that's awesome. Um, we've got Horror Month starring next month on October yeah. here at the here at the Nerdcore. Uh, my my uh, co-host was gonna go ahead and pick uh, Army of Darkness for his uh, his Patreon pick, but. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> I told him, dude, we've never even talked to Evil Dead. Why are you choosing Army of Darkness? Like, <laughs> See, <this> okay. <laughs> you want to think, but it's like, that's my favorite one. Yeah. 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 Last movie y'all saw? Uh, last movie. Oh, we last saw... movie. Oh, what did we see in theaters? I don't know. We go to the movies all the time. Oh, we saw Old. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan. I, I know. Like Nobody it's... liked I liked it, but I'm not the movie buff. So, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I gave that a beautiful half star out of five. That's, oh, that's my la that's my oh, that's my least favorite so far this year. It. Yeah, I didn't. I was. I didn't really like. I it. liked it. Okay. Yeah, what there's did you a see? lot of things that I could have done with my time that day instead of watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I saw uh, Mandy probably. Oh, Mandy's incredible. Yeah, um, is that the one you wouldn't let me watch? No, that was a uh, uh, Hereditary, <laughs> which was a great movie. Yeah, oh, right. there's just great, but Mandy, um, there's yeah. it's really hard for me to point pinpoint exactly what I want my style to be, but when I watched Mandy, I said, "That's what I want. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. what I want. I want a hellish nightmare soaked in blood. I want <laughs> that. <laughs> I want that." And I was like, "I don't care who's my gaffer. I don't care who's my production designer. Get me that." <laughs> I want That's that. Amazing. Yeah, Eritrea is really good. Eritrea is really good. Uh, yeah, I like but um, uh, I just can't have too many dark thoughts. I can't be watching all these like scary movies all the time because it makes me more depressed. Okay. But also ahead. the the problem like Laurel doesn't like older movies, and oh. so like my heyday of of my love of movie movies is usually like the eighties, you know, mm -hmm. especially horror movies. But there's been a lot of great new ones that have come out that Laurel's liked. Yeah. Like, what did you watch? Uh, 
Well, maybe we let's let's not it. talk about all the terrible movies that we watch because that's much. okay. Uh, you start naming off those B horror movies, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with old uh we old well not old uh that one though uh, there's a lot wrong with old the movie but the uh right. old movies there's nothing <laughs> wrong with it <that. laughs> he said there's a lot wrong with old half star <laughs> yeah and, look man i'm gonna be real honest with y'all you know there's a, lo- there's a lot of money that i wish i could get back from spending my time watching old um <laughs> let's but you know what i was able to write a review for it and yeah, yeah, you used it to your you advantage. Know, if that's what it got me accredited, if that's what got me accredited for New York, for National Film Festival, hell, I'll, I'll 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 write five more reviews of old if you want me to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, so funny. Okay. Yeah. All right. Last <laughs> last uh, speed question here. Well, more more so, just let me get to know y'all. Um, is there a city that you are just dying to to play a show at? Yeah. Um, so New York City, we've already played there, but yes, but love it. I want to play there all the time, every day, because mm-hmm. I love that place. But I think I want to go to like Spain or somewhere like you. Yeah, I want to go to Europe. Like, yeah, I've never been to Europe. I I would love to go because I I played in uh, China for a long time. I'd love to go back oh, there. That's awesome. Get or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, before I get out of here and I outro this, I do like to. Whether it's an interview, whether y'all are on the podcast or anything, I like to give people the chance to plug what they do because it's important. You know, where else are they going to find you? You know, where That's can they find y'all? And the sun's starting to go down. So uh, it's getting dark. Yeah, it's getting dark. <laughs> I, I didn't think about the ring light. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't know. It's all right. No, we can just we can just get Andy or Patrick to go and uh, set up that light, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Okay. You can just find us at theyoungfables.com. All right. You can- that would go everywhere. Need, everywhere. com. Y'all, y'all heard it from here, from them themselves. Uh, of course, if you are in the Nashville area on October the 2nd at 9.30 p.m. at the Rocky Town Theater, you're going to want to go check out the world, the, the premiere at the Nashville Film Festival of the, fa- fa- the Fable of a Song. Y'all go and check it out. Y'all can go read my review on nerdcore.com. Y'all are going to see this on YouTube, and I'll have a page for it ready for y'all on nerdcore.com. Stay tuned to all of the coverage of Nashville Film Festival here at the Nerdcore. As always, I hope y'all had a wonderful time. And remember, y'all, keep talking that nerd stuff.